170 kilometers from Chennai sits the vibrant coastal city of Puducherry. Known for its pristine sandy beaches and cultural pluralism, the city attracts close to 18 lakh tourists every year. However, the shape of Puducherry's beaches is fast changing. Affected progressively by coastal erosion, these beaches have been disappearing at an alarming rate. The fishing community, who make up for around 12% of the population, are the hardest hit. Wholly dependent on the beaches for livelihood, the eroded beaches of the fishing hamlets offer little by way of space for their myriad activities today. Aramugam is the panchayat head of Bilaichavadi village, about 10 kilometers from Puducherry town. He and his friends have stopped fishing for the past 10 days as the beach is so steep that halting their boats has become difficult. The fishermen's shelters in the Pilaichavadi village has also been destroyed and the loss has been huge. Aramugam laments. The 2020 National Fisheries Policy tells us that close to 69% of post-harvesting activities are carried out by women, from cutting and drying fish to auctioning and selling. The erosion has affected the livelihoods of nearly four and a half thousand women fish vendors here over the last decade. Some, like Saroja, who have been in the business for 40 years, have even lost their homes. <laughs> Coastal erosion is a natural phenomenon that hasn't spared to many coastlines around the world. Sea level rise, tropical cyclones and storm surges have all been contributing factors triggered by climate change. According to the 2022 assessment by the National Centre for Coastal Research, more than 56% of Puducherry's coast has already eroded. But climate change alone isn't responsible. Puducherry's beaches have reportedly suffered from another reason development activities that seem to have interfered with the natural beach ecosystem. The Puducherry Harbour was built between the years of 1986 and 89. Constructed at the mouth of the Ariana Kuppam River, the attempt was to build a structure that would protect anchored vessels from overpowering waves. The construction of that harbour interfered with the natural movement of, you know, sand, the movement of water, currents, waves, and then, of course, the sand, which then disrupted this natural equilibrium and started creating erosion on one side. Now, it so happens that the north side of the harbour is highly populated because we have the Pondicherry town. And we have a lot of villages, a lot of fishermen villages, a lot of settlements along the town. And that erosion has therefore been impacting a large numbers of people. On the other side of the harbour, we have an accumulation of sand because the harbour is blocking the sand. Over the last four decades, the harbour has had far-reaching consequences leading up to the literal alteration of the shape of the coast. Environmental advocacy group 
Pondi Khan has been documenting these changes for more than a decade. Oro Filio Schiavina, resident of Puducherry and co-founder of Pondi Khan, tells us how the development of quick-fix measures by the local government, like installing groins and sea walls, actually aggravated the erosion. Groins essentially are designed to block the sand. The whole purpose of a groin is to retain sand. Now, on a coastline where the natural process is that sand moves along the coastline, if you create a blockage of sand, you are bound to create erosion on the other. You are going to disrupt that equilibrium. To give you an idea, we conducted a, a very simplistic study where along the Pondicherry coastline, we saw, we measured the area of beach gained after building groins versus the area of beach lost. Okay? So we saw that when groins were built, within that segment for one square meter of beach gained four square meters of beach were lost so the question is do we really gain or do we actually lose according to the national center for coastal research more than 6000 kilometers of peninsular india's coastline has severely eroded by 30 to 40 percent between 1996 and 2016. This loss was most acutely felt along Puducherry's 40 km strip and especially visible along one of the most prominent beaches, the Promenade. In 2017, with the efforts of Pondi Khan and the National Institute of Ocean Technology, a unit of the Ministry of Earth Sciences, an experimental beach restoration project was implemented on the Promenade, opposite the Secretariat building. We did a bit of research and we could see that there's a global trend of moving, you know, away from hard coastal protection measures and going more towards softer coastal protection measures. And what do soft coastal protection measure, uh, measures mean? It means trying to understand nature, trying to copy nature and trying to work with nature. The goal was to restore the natural balance in sand distribution disrupted by natural and anthropogenic factors. What emerged by way of the experiment was a combination of sand nourishment and allowing for sand movement. Now, what's conventionally done is something called beach nourishment. Okay, So you, you take sand from uh, the place where there's excess sand, so in this case in the harbour and south of the harbour, and the northern side of the town, where the erosion is happening, needs sand. So there's a shortage of sand. So it's no rocket science. So you just have to bring the sand from one place to where it's not needed, to the other place where it's needed. So that's called sand bypassing, sand nourishment. So that's, that's the heart of the project. To allow for natural sand movement, an artificial wedge reef was submerged into the ocean. So the, the submerged reef acts a little bit like a speed breaker. It slows down the movement of sand without blocking it. A little bit like a speed breaker of sand. The sand comes here, it slows down, stabilizes itself, spends some time here, and then it can also move beyond when there's an excess of sand. Seven years since these efforts, the promenade has witnessed a slow emergence of a one and a half kilometer sandy beach. But experts point out how sustained efforts will be imperative for long-term coastal revival. Well, the beaches, as long as the harbour is there, the beaches will keep eroding because uh, the harbour is blocking and interfering the movement of sand. So what is being done here is in fact mitigating the impacts of the, uh, the harbour. So it will have to be a continuous process. There's no, there's, there are no two ways about it. Meanwhile, in villages like Bilaichavadi, fishing communities still struggle with lessening fish catch, another fallout of a reducing coastline and habitat loss. Since the 80s, the Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute 
has been working to install artificial reefs along these coastlines to help improve fish growth. So the related fishery and the kind of practices based on reef fishery has also come down substantially over a period of time. The main aim of uh, doing artificial reefs in our coastal waters is we have seen sufficient amount of uh, immediate coastal waters habitat losses due to various reasons. Fishing villages near Chennai serve as a living example of how artificial reefs allow the regeneration of a natural marine ecosystem going on to create habitat for fish breeding and growth. Devan from Kovalam, a fishing village 40 kilometers from Chennai, has been fishing for 45 years now. His fish catch has even doubled since artificial reefs were installed, he tells us. First min kamya kadchi de, pondi sankara valarindi metimidi nungini karwa vadidi korli kalavan kundi para vari para metimidi shambara ara para shangada para yalla ma kadhi gidi kalavan madu kuta kuta maar gidi. The Central Marines Fisheries Institute has now been commissioned to install 14 artificial reefs along the coast of Puducherry by the government of Puducherry. We have planned for 14 sites, 10 in Pondicherry, another 4 in Karaikil. I have done an extensive survey visiting all the coastal villages and I have understood that the demands for such things are much higher. And in the next phase, I understand Pondicherry's uh, government has requested for another 110 or 120 more sites to be deployed in Pondicherry, although the number of villages, it might be close to only 20. As evening falls, locals pour out onto Puducherry's beaches, a shared space that has been central to lives here. Uh, you have noticed that it is a, a vehicle-free zone. So people, they work very relaxedly, children, they are playing. And in Pondicherry, if you see, other than the beach, there is nothing else. And as for this beach restoration project is uh, on, yes, it will be very much beneficial to the locals because there is no other things here in Pondicherry. So it, uh, tourism point of view and for the local also, it, it will be a good thing. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.